1.4 using the definitions of the trigonometric functions. First, we're going to find each function value. Um, for this first one, it says cosine of theta, or that they want us to find cosine of theta given that the secant of theta is 5 over 3. Well, if you'll remember, the relationship between cosine and secant is that they are reciprocal functions. And that, that means all we have to do to find cosine of theta is take the reciprocal of secant. And that would give us 3 over 5. All right. And then for sine of theta, given that cosecant is cosecant of theta is negative square root of 12 over 2, these are also reciprocal functions. So all we have to do is take the reciprocal, which would be a negative 2 over the square root of 12, but anytime we have a radical in the denominator, we need to rationalize it by multiplying <clears throat> by the radical. So that would give us sine of theta as negative 2 square root 12 over 12. Now we talked about quadrantal angles in the last section and depending on which quadrant our um, triangle is located in, that's going to determine the signs of each trig function. So, for example, if our um, triangle is located in quadrant 1, then sine, cosine, tangent, all of the trig functions are going to be positive. But if it's located in quadrant 2, and so what I mean by that, if you'll remember, if we had P located somewhere in quadrant 2, and so we had a triangle like this, then sine would be positive, so sine is our y value, so we know that um, so our y value would be positive. Cosine is negative because x is negative. Tangent is going to be negative because tangent is y over x, so 1 is positive and 1 is negative, so tangent would be negative. And then the reciprocals are going to follow the same sine values. Um, if sine is positive, then its reciprocal is positive. Cosine is negative, its reciprocal is negative. Tangent is negative, its reciprocal is negative. And then for the third quadrant, my x value is negative, my y value is negative if I have a point here. Um, so sine and cosine are both negative, but tangent is y over x, so tangent is going to be positive because negative divided by negative. And then again, its reciprocals have the same signs. And then in the fourth quadrant, sine, um, my y value is going to be negative, but my x value, cosine, is positive. And then tangent is going to be negative because we have a negative uh, divided by a positive. And then again, the reciprocal um, functions <clears throat> have the same signs. Now, that's a lot to remember. So there is a little trick to remembering what the values are. If you picture the quadrants in um, on a Cartesian coordinate system, you can remember where the positive values are by this little phrase, all students take calculus. So we start in quadrant one, all, and then we go around um, quadrant two, three, and four, all students take calculus. And what this <clears throat> helps us to remember, in quadrant one, all of the signs are positive. In quadrant two, sine and its reciprocal, <coughs> excuse me, are the only positive values. In quadrant three, tangent and its reciprocal are positive. And then in quadrant four, cosine and its reciprocal are positive. So this phrase, all students take calculus, tell us which quadrants have positive values.
Okay, so this says determine the signs of the trigonometric functions of an angle in standard position given the measure. All right, so uh, 87 degrees, we know that 87 degrees, this would be 90 degrees, so 87 is going to be <clears throat> a little less than 90. So that puts us in quadrant one. Well, all of the trig functions are positive in quadrant one. So it says determine the signs of the trig functions. So we need to write out, um, let's see. Sine, cosine, tangent. So all of these are positive and its reciprocals are positive. All right, I went ahead and drew, wrote out um, the trig functions so you wouldn't have to watch me write those out. Um, okay, so now for 300 degrees, we know that, you know, if we start here, halfway around is 180. <clears throat> this would be 270. If we go all the way, that's 360. So 300 degrees is here in the fourth quadrant. All right, so all students take calculus. So that means cosine and its reciprocal are positive. And then everything else is negative. Okay, and then for negative 200 degrees, if I picture um, my Cartesian coordinate system, negative 200 degrees, Remember, if it's negative, that means we're rotating clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So negative 200 degrees, if I go to right here, that would be negative 180. So negative 200 is going to be here in the second quadrant. So that would be all students. That means sine and its reciprocal are positive and all the rest are negative. All right, now we're going to identify the quadrant or possible quadrants of an angle theta that satisfies the given conditions. So this says that sine of theta is greater than zero. That means it's positive. And tangent of theta is less than zero, so it's negative. So which quadrant or quadrants would sine be positive, but tangent is negative? Okay, so let me just draw this out again. All students take calculus. So we know that in this quadrant, they're all positive. Well, they're not both positive. In this quadrant, sine is positive and everything else is negative. So that would be quadrant two. Let's make sure it wouldn't happen in any other quadrant. Here in quadrant three, tangent is positive. Everything else is negative. Okay, well, tangent's not positive. And here, uh, cosine is positive and everything else is negative. So if both of these were negative, that would be in quadrant three, but quadrant two is the only quadrant that would satisfy these conditions. For B, it says that cosine is less than zero, so cosine is negative, and secant is also negative. Okay, well, cosine and secant are reciprocal functions. So anything that happens to cos or the sine of cosine is going to be the sine of secant. So we just need to find the quadrant or quadrants where cosine is negative. Okay, well in quadrant one, everything's positive. And in quadrant three, cosine and its reciprocal are positive. But in quadrants two, I don't know if I said that was three or four, that's quadrant four. Quadrant four, cosine, and its reciprocal are positive. But in quadrants two and three, only sine is positive in quadrant two and only tangent is positive in quadrant three. So that means in both of these quadrants, cosine would be negative. Cosine and its reciprocal would be negative. So that would be quadrant two and quadrant three.
All right, we're going to find the five remaining trig functions, trig function values for each angle theta. This says that theta is in quadrant two and sine is two over three. So if you'll remember sine, the ratio for sine is y over r. Well, in order to find the remaining trig functions, we're going to need x. And since we have two sides of the triangle, then we can find the third side by using the Pythagorean theorem. But this time we have r and we have y. So r um, squared is equal to y squared plus x squared. Okay, so that means we have 3 squared is equal to 2 squared plus x squared. So that would be 9 and 4. And if I subtract 4 from both sides and take the square root, I get that x is equal to the square root of 5. Um, 9 minus 4, of course, is 5. So it would be the square root of 5. So now I have y, r, and x. And I just need to fill in my trig functions. Okay, so sine we already have. It's 2 thirds. So we know that the reciprocal um, function is just going to be the reciprocal. Cosine of theta is x over r. My x is the square root of 5 over r, which is 3. Now, secant is the reciprocal of this, but remember, we have to rationalize our denominator. So this would be 3 square root 5 over 5. Then for tangent, tangent is y over x, so that's 2 over the square root of 5. We need to rationalize that, so that would be 2 square root of 5 over 5. And then cotangent is the reciprocal, which is the square root of 5 over 2. Now, there's one part in this that we haven't considered. <clears throat> and that is the quadrant that it's in. Well, sine is positive in quadrant one and in quadrant two. But that's in quadrant two, sine is the only thing that's positive. So that means we need to go in here and we need to change the signs of everything except for sine and its reciprocal function. So this would be negative. This is negative. Negative and negative. Oof. All right. For B, we have that tangent is negative 15 over 8, and theta is in quadrant 2. Okay, so tangent is y over x. Well, if we're in quadrant 2, y is positive and x is negative. So y is going to be 15 and x is going to be negative 8. And then our r, we have to find what r is. Okay, so for r, r is going to be the square root of 15 squared plus negative 8 squared. And if we simplify that, we get that r is 17. Okay, so now let's fill in our trig values, trig function values. Okay, so sine is y over r, that's 15 over 17, and it's reciprocal. Cosine is x over r, so that's a negative 8 over 17, and the reciprocal would be 17, negative 17 over 8. And then we were given tangent, and this is its reciprocal. 
Now we shouldn't have to worry about the signs since we were able to tell um, what was negative, um, but let's just check it in quadrant two, all students. So sine and cosecant should be the only thing positive, and it is. All right, we have one more example down here. So this says that cosecant is negative three. Okay, so um, we know that anytime we have a whole number, we can change it to a fraction by putting it over one. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, which means that cosecant, instead of sine being y over r, cosecant is r over y. So r is going to be we don't know if it's 3 or negative 3 um, because this negative sign could go with either one of these. Um, so I'm just going to write a 3. And then the y is either 1 or negative 1. All right, now this says that um, cosine is greater than 0. Um, so that means that my x value is going to be positive. Okay, now we know one of these has to be negative. Um, and then, let's see, we gotta figure out what the x value is. <clears throat> well, if cosine is positive, that means that we're all students take calculus, we're in quadrant four, and sine, or my y value, is negative in quadrant four. Okay, so that's gonna be negative. Um, my x is going to be positive. Let's figure out what that is. So we have <clears throat> r squared is equal to uh, x squared plus y squared. So that would be 9 plus 1. And if I subtract 1 from both sides... <laughs> I'm going to get 8, so x is the square root of 8. Oh, not square root of x, square root of 8. Now that we have all three parts, let me write out the trig functions. Okay, so we were already given cosecant. Cosecant is negative 3, so its reciprocal would be a negative 1 third. Then cosine is x over r, so that would be the square root of 8 over negative 1, or negative square root of 8. And then if we take the reciprocal of that, um, wait a minute, I did that wrong, not over negative 1, the square root of 8 over r, which is 3. Then if we take the reciprocal of that, that's going to be 3 over the square root of 8. We need to rationalize that, so that would be 3 square root of 8 over 8. Tangent is y over r. I mean, y, I'm saying them all wrong now. y over x. So that would be a negative... Negative 1 over the square root of 8. Again, we have to rationalize that. So that would give us um, the square root of 8, negative square root of 8 over 8. Now, um, these need to be simplified. We'll simplify those in a minute. Okay, and then the cotangent uh, would just be negative square root of 8. Now, these are not perfect squares, but these radicals are not simplified, so we need to simplify those. Um, let's see. So if I have the square root of 8, there, it's not a perfect square, but it contains a perfect square factor, which means that we need to simplify that. So the biggest perfect square in 8 is 4. And 4 comes out as a 2. So square root of 8 is the same thing as 2 square root of 2. So that means we need to uh, simplify these using that. So that would be 2 square root of 2 over 3. And then if I rewrite this, 
as 2 square root of 2. I would multiply the 2 and the 3, so that would be 6 square root of 2 over 8, which can be reduced. And that would reduce to, um, let me see, I ran out of room. Okay, so then that would be uh, 3 square root of 2 over 4, okay? And then tangent, that'd be a negative 2 square root 2 over 8, which would reduce to a negative square root of 2 over 4. And then cotangent, was just negative square root of 8, which would simplify to a negative 2 square root of 2. So anytime um, we can uh, rationalize the denominator, we can't have a radical in the denominator, but then also our radicals need to be simplified.